different. So I think I am now live, hopefully. Let me see what's going on. Oh, excellent. That's a good start. Uh, let me just double check with my phone that I really have gone right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Here we are. Let me go to Pentart's page. Oh, that says I'm live. Yay! Uh -huh. Let me share that. Sorry. Oh, the delay. Excellent. Hi, Deirdre. Oh, dear, that what a stressful start that was. Normally, I don't have any headaches with going live on StreamYard. And for some reason, best know to the technology powers that be. We've had all sorts of headaches this, morning, this evening, which really isn't very helpful. So we've ignored StreamYard and we've gone di live direct to Facebook. Um, so well, like my nerves are a little less frazzled, then we'll we'll have a think about what we're going to do because I'm all a bit, a bit hot and bothered. And I'm sorry, I haven't got two screens um, because I'm live through uh, directly to Facebook and I haven't set up my OBS camera because it was going to be quicker for me to go live straight away having received an invitation for direct access to Pentart's page. So it's all adds to the fun of life. It, yeah, absolutely. But Annie had problems yesterday, so I'm... Um, as well so that's not helpful um, but I'm sure it will get resolved in the fullness of time so I just have a plain cotton bag in front of me I've put some masking tape along the top of it and I'm just going to um, just going to protect these borders um, as best as, as I can with some masking tape and because I don't want to mark these particularly um, and I've set myself a bit of a challenge because of the box bottom to this bag but hey ho and I'm sorry if that was my head in the way but we're gonna have there we are we're gonna have a little bit of a play <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely and breathe it's a good thing it you know it's a fundamental of part of life isn't it breathing yeah da -da -da, there we are well let's just just i've got a plan for these this is where the straps are attached um but i've got a plan i have a plan and now i've got my camera in the way there we are Let's just pop that up there and pop that up there. <laughs> yeah, in actually, it's a hell. I've no idea how many people are now watching because the system doesn't tell me and my phone has gone off. So I'll just sort that one out in a minute because that's always never helpful when I can't see what's going on. Um, so let me just click that, click that because I can see that there's lots of lots of lady yeah betty we've had a bit of a, t a difficulty with pen with the stream yard system today and technology of me it's a long time since i've had a a, a real headache with it but hey ho today we have got a problem so cool let's do a bit of fabric color mixing so i've i'm i've titled my project beautiful poppies because they are beautiful um and we're going to do a bit of a mix and match from things today so that i'm just going to put a big glob glob being a technical term a fabric medium onto there onto my plate so fabric medium is a way of diluting but not changing the the um the tone or the shade um of your paint it just dilutes the red pigment um black would make it gray or white would make it pinker and this will keep it the underlying red tone so this is the carmine fabric paint from pentart um and i'm just going to add little bits at a time little and gentle is not my middle name is it but let's just give that little whiz um 
There we are. You see a little blob and it really is still. Yeah, that's how pigment dense they are. So let me add a, a, another slug of that because, you know, ooh, there we are. We all want some more. And now we'll have way more than we need. But hey ho, that's all just good fun, isn't it? So there we are. That's better. So we've just essentially, the white will um, dry as clear, the fabric medium, um, but the pigment will be spread out further and therefore it will, if the powers that be are correct, which I'm sure they are, will be paler. So, hello Myra, welcome, 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 welcome. So I, um, I have just mixed some fabric medium with the carmine fabric paint from the new paints and this the fabric medium will act as a glue for paper for fabric uh, for fabric for glitters for pigments but it can also be used to dilute out your color without the needing to add white and so that's what we've done and i'm just going to add this to that i've got a plastic uh, liner inside this bag uh, so that I don't contaminate the thing and we're going to decorate one side on the live and then we might well do some more elsewhere oops that won't matter because this was going that I'm going to put the undiluted color down there so there we are so let's just pop that on there Once this is dried, I can mask off that bottom bit and I can cover that over. So that's, this is the plan for this evening, that we'll, we will do this. There we are. And if I give that a little spray with some water, uh, hopefully I can spread that fabric a bit further. There we are. We can then dilute it down a little bit further. There we are, and we can move some of that pigment up a little bit. There we are, that's better. And we'll get some colour, natural colour variation into here. There we are. And I, as I say, I will need to, I know I will need to do the back of this off the live, but you'll get the, the, the gist on the live, and I can do some tidying up off the live. There we are, because that's just the way it is. There we are. Let's just add a little bit of spray, just some water to help move that about a little bit. There we are. So we get a little bit of colour variation in here. As I say, I can go back in after the afterwards and neaten edges up, and I will do the opposite the back of the piece then anyway so that's cool there we are there we are and now rinse and repeat on the other side because there we are that's what we wish to do so there we are hi carol so i might be a bit discombobulated because it really doesn't take much for me to be discombobulated when it comes to technology not being very helpful um but hey ho We'll get it sorted. There we are, because we've actually just gone live direct to Facebook today. Um, there we are. But that's cool. There we are. We can just come underneath there. Come up to that bit. We'll add another spray of water. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. It's never good, is it? When you, yeah, best laid plans. I mean, I'm technologically challenged at the best of times. I know I am. You know, it, it, technology frightens frightens me to death. So when things go wrong, my first instinct is it's always me that's wrong. Never, never that it might be the technology that's the issue, but. Hey ho! I know Annie had problems yesterday, or I think Annie had problems yesterday, because my Hungarian isn't good enough to know exactly what she was saying. 
but I'm fairly sure she she was trying to you know she was quite late going live so I am fairly certain that she too had some issues with the joys of script of StreamYard yeah because that's just what happens isn't it yeah sometimes technology does its own thing but hey ho there we are so we'll as I say I will neaten up and do the back in the same way as the front and sort out the pocket at the bottom um, probably after the live because look let's get rid of that offending hair come on out you wait there we are so let's just neaten that neaten that there we are excellent so that is the plan for that bit and now <laughs> yeah it is right now then good you can see how different those two colors are so same pot of paint there we are and rather than waiting for it to dry we'll we will and then mask as you'll be you will be here forever if i do that we should just be careful there we are as i say because we've got a pocketed bag it'll be moderately traumatic to get into the pockets and do that bit but we will we will get there we will get there let's just take a little a smaller brush because we can then get right up to that seam with that brush and then we can just come into that pocket into there spread it out a bit and as I say I can do the other side once it's once this bit has dried and even it all up it might be a slightly more of a, a struggle for the other side so I can see I've got some of this that I've missed in that corner so let me just nip into there need to nip into there and even that up so it looks a little nicer than it currently does there we are and we can take some of that and pop it into there because I can see that I'm missing bits up there cool let's just carry on let's do the big areas first shall we because then that will be easier and then we can tidy up So that bit's going to be in the pocket so ultimately it won't be such a problem and the base of the bag there we are so these paints are incredibly pigment dense there we are you can let me just lift that over there so we've done some bits there we are, there we are. So this is a project that is well within my comfort zone. Most painting with is not, but just changing white fabric to bright red is definitely in my comfort zone. We are going to add some more bits. I promise you it isn't just going to be me converting this project to bright red all bright red there we are so let's just get that covered you can as I say this is just one albeit fairly generous layer of paint going on here so let me I want that, that I want to keep that my central panel relatively white let me just grab a baby wipe so I don't transfer that red onto there just while I hold it as it's wriggling about there we are, and we'll revert to the, the smaller brush in a minute because it's going to be more accurate along that edge and will give me a nice edge, hopefully, 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 well, no hopefully about it, it will do. If we're careful with what we're doing, we will get there. We will get there. You see, we're now getting red where we don't want it, but hey-ho that can be resolved well it will get resolved 
because we have a plan for that essential panel. There we are. So this is just going literally onto the dry fabric. And as I say, I will do the other pieces after the live when I can do them area by area, let one part dry and then go on to the next bit. But I just want that corner to be red. There we are. There, there is cardboard inside, darling. Oh, <coughs> well, actually, there's a plastic sheet uh, sheet inside. <coughs> um, and the reason I've not done put cardboard in is because I want to do some stamping, Diane, and it's going to be easier for me to do that with it softer than it currently is. There we are. Let's just use up some of that paint that's there. I'm going to, as I say, I'm going, I know that I'm going to have to come back in and do that. And this is down at this pace. It's partly because of the, the nature of the bottom of the bag. So let me just turn that in over there for the time being. Um, it's a pocketed bag with a gusset there and so that's making it just a little bit more difficult for me uh, to do that. There we are. And the reason I've put a piece of plastic in it is so that the two sides of the bag don't stick together because otherwise they will. There we are. So hopefully we've got that right. <laughs> That is very true. That is very true. Right, now then, let's just pop that onto there. Lid, relid that and pop it over here for safekeeping. There we are. And I'm going to pop that on the floor so I can stand in it. Not, but that will be the next trick, I'm sure. And let's just give this a wee wad dry, another technical term. Because otherwise I can see me ending up in all sorts of pickles, moving stuff around. It, it wouldn't matter even if it was, my darling. I took it totally as a helpful suggestion. Totally as a helpful suggestion. Um, because it's very, very logical. Very logical. Uh, but I actually do have a firm board underneath. Yeah, boarding under there. Um, Oh, yeah. I'm going to have pink hand. I don't want pink handles. I want white handles. You um. I don't think there weren't any on um, Pentart's page, but there certainly were on someone else's live stream last night. There are some very strange people in this world, you know. I'm each for everyone being themselves and doing their own thing, but I think everyone should respect each other. And the least said about that, the better, I think, moving forward. So the, the paints dry quite quickly. They're really thick, really pigment dense. And even though you think I'm turning through quite a lot, the reality of life is I've done a good few projects now without... Um, without any problems. So there we are. <laughs> if I don't have this get this dry, I know that I will end up in trouble. So my recommendation is not is that you don't actually take a heat gun to dry it, that you actually just um, use a uh, you know just let it air dry for its uh, you know on its own. Because I think you'll find that that you know, will give you ultimately a better look. And as I say, I can go back in and I can neaten my edges uh, quietly, calmly, off the live. I'm getting there. I just don't want to smudge anything down at the bottom. So there we are. And ultimately, I do want to get rid of that tape. Um, so I need that to be dry before I do that. But it. it 
so it doesn't take so long. And even though I am um, heat setting, you know, drying this now, that is all I'm doing. I'm not heat setting it. So the, the fabric paints, to be machine washable, long term, need to be ironed for two minutes in each area. So a hot press might be more helpful. Um, so that, um, you know, once they're heat set, then, oh dear, that doesn't sound good, does it? That's also decided it might be on the wall. There we are. Sounds like right. So let's just take that and pop it currently on another bit of the floor. Right. So I we're going to be doing some stamping. So I'm going to show you the processes. I have some stamps from the Indian Block Company because I can't paint something without some helpful guidance. We have a nice sponge. We've got our red paint and we'll get that back out off there because we might as well use the red paint that we've got on there. And I wanted to make myself a bag dangle because that seemed like a logical thing to do because when we've got bags we all, all have something you know we have things that we can hang on them to um you know as decoration don't we we don't just have ugh, the the main thing so let's just get rid of the red off my head. red paint stains everything they're very very nice so these these blocks are hand carved indian uh, Indian blocks by uh, you know by a women's collective it's, it's it's good to help them and I've had a little bit of a play because having a bit of a play is always a good thing so I'm going to show you or take you through how I made a bag dangle and then we're going to add some of the blocks into the central panel of the um, of the bag and you can see that this is no longer floppy it's a solid piece um so i'm going to show you how i did that because that's uh, so let's just take some of that red and i've just got a sponge and it won't matter for this purposes if i pick up some of the paler and literally all you do with these wood blocks is use a sponge and make sure you've got a good coverage and then before you go painting with them and stamping with them you need to grab yourself a nice soft foam mat have I got a, a big foam mat yeah I have got big foam. so that will allow me to pop this into the center of my bag which is why I didn't put a piece so this is just a really nice thick squidgy piece of foam um, mouse mat would work rolled up pile of dishcloths would work And so will, um, you know, will a pile of newspaper at the end of the day. And literally all you need to do is push a stamp down and give it a little press. So, Diane, no, I don't think it does actually alter the colours. These are so pigment dense. Even if it, bur did, you know, it burns off the liquid when you're, um, when you're um, using the heat gun and doesn't need to change doesn't change the color of the pigment of these as pigments so there we are we have a beautiful stamped image so you can see but soft pressure and underneath lots of paint on your thing uh, on your piece and then it will work and then I have ones that I have already got over there so let me pop that there and two minutes is a long time a very long time so I just have a travel iron no steam and I'm, all I'm going to do is put that on there and then we're going to hold it down for two minutes <laughs> no my darling but it's a good thought um the foam my foam mat actually um is purpose designed for 
um, block printing and if you're going to do a lot of block printing then I really suggest that that's what you do that you, you just take your time and you know and, and you get the correct stuff to do it um, it just is super big um, and because I bought lots of, of uh, blocks because I've got a large obsession with them at the moment um, I got the big one for the price of the very small one because you know you can cut down big but you can't make small bigger if that makes sense so we just need to sit here now and wait for two minutes so if someone would like to you know, let me know when we think we've got to two minutes because two minutes when you're standing waiting is an awful long time but you do just have to be patient um, you do just have to be patient when we do this right hopefully we're at two minutes Dias hmm. message is still telling me that it's one minute away so maybe it hasn't been two minutes yet ah, there we are so we can pop that on and that's probably okay and I'm gonna put that out of the way so I don't then catch myself and then this needs to cool down so I can get rid of that and I did have nice now it's hot so you can see how floppy that is compared to this so this will flap this flops and I'll just let it cool down the problem is that that is hot so the eagle eyed might have seen at the beginning that I actually have gloves out you never see me with gloves I spent my life working in gloves with <laughs> yeah so it's and you can never get plastic gloves on when you want to can you you know and I've got sweaty hands which again isn't gonna help matters it really isn't going to help matters <laughs> Yeah, we will get it. We will be get it. I'm very used to standing, uh, Betty, because as a surgeon I stood for all of my operations. So you can see, but I didn't work with bits hanging off the ends. Anyway, we'll pop that there. And I have this is Pentart's water based fabric hardener. So we'll just put a generous amount of that onto there. This is why I've got uh, gloves on because you need to work it in to the fabric properly give it a jolly good massage and I reckon that given that this is liquid and I've heat set the ink and I've given it a jolly good rub yeah really working those that's the correct size yeah really working this in Give it a good rub, rubber dub rub as if they, I'm going to wash in washing it and that is not moving. Hey, hey. So that can sit there and I can now dispose of those because I've got one that I've done earlier. <laughs> so those can go over there. And then all you need to do is leave that to dry. And it can go there. So oh dear oh dear. So much for this being a non sticky paint palette. We'll just take it off there. That's not helpful. So you can see that the hardener attaches to everything. There we are. We'll get rid of the worst of that. That's not a problem. We'll spend ages picking off the paper. There we are. So. <laughs> and then I grabbed my scrapbooking items. Just clean that wet off there before it spreads because we've all got scrapbooking stuff in our house haven't we yeah yeah I think so I think so now I do have a Frixion pen, pen which is a heat soluble pen but as ever do I know where it is no but if you've got a quilting heat soluble pen you can use this I should just cut around the edges of that there we are 
so I just picked a die that I could work with you could actually just put this through your die cutting machine but I decided I was going to have so many pieces bits and pieces out that this was going to be easier than lifting up my die cutting machine and should I use my really nice quality um, scissors or shall I use my normal scissors well, because this is now you can see you can, or you can hear I think just how crunchy that is so I'm clearly not going to abuse my very nice scrapbook yeah fab, fabric scissors I'm happy to cut the soft fabric with those but I am so not happy to cut this hardened fabric you can hear it you know, it's crunchy it really is solid and I think this shows to you just how um, how you know how effective the um, the paints are when they, and when they say that they are waterproofed um, I've given it a fairly good batch. I wouldn't suggest you put everything in the same machine in a washing machine at you know sky high temperature, 20 to 30 degrees, cool hand wash. Yeah, um, and there we are. So we're going to make a dangle for our bag as an accessory because I think it will look quite nice. I'm sure I can take a rubber to this in a minute and get rid of any of the marks around it there we are god i'm a bit lost without streaming i should might be telling me how long i've been on there what's going on yeah what i need to do there we are so there we are let's just get rid of the rest of that There we are. So, scrapbooking tools. Yay! We like scrapbooking tools, don't we? Let's put those out of harm's way. Get that off there. So let's just pop, because I know it's fits, a hole into there. There we are. That's, and you can't, you know, you can see how cleanly this is punched out. Let's just get rid of the bits off there. Let's do another one into there. Cool, with a bit of luck that's set on the right thing. And then we'll have some eyelets. So I've got some black ball tape, black though, so let's find some black eyelets or some gun metal more importantly from there. So that's a gun metal eyelet. And if I was clever, I could probably put the two together in one go, but I'm not clever. So there we are. So we're not going to try and be clever after the night, you know, after everything else. So the little eyelet just gets poked into there. And then eyelet setting tool. Hopefully that will then scrunch nicely. Yay, yeah, not bad, not bad. I'll live with that. I did get out too, yeah, cool. I think I might have to treat myself to a new copper dial. It has to be so. This this poor one is definitely, I think, seen better days. There we are. So two of those into there. So that will stop that from fraying. Not that that will be a big problem. And then I can pop these back to back with a bit of luck. And I know that that ball chain fits into there. So that's always helpful, isn't it? Always helpful. I can change that and shorten it as I want. And then I've just got a ball chain connector here. Um, but you could put this on just as easily, use the same method. So pop it in. Pull it into place. It clicks in. Pop the other end into there click that in there we are into there. and I can now put those off to the side we're going to add the detail once the, when the next bit of the bag is is ready so let us claim our bag which has, has a few minutes to cool down 
not completely cooled down, but hey ho, there we are. Let's just take those handles up out of harm's way from the colour, pop the fabric medium back out of the way, and that can go there. Cool. Ugh. Let's just give this another good try because it's not quite dry, but it is getting there. So you, I think you can see quite happily, it, you know, it's happily, but where I added the fabric medium, it's acted as a brilliant lightener. I've got the bright red carmine here, and my lightened, because of the fabric medium, um, pink here. And because it's the same base, and I haven't added any black or white, I've just added the fabric medium that dries clear to it. I've just got, you know, it's exactly the right um, colour to, to coordinate really nicely with, there we are, which is I want to do some stamping onto some of these uh, other pieces. So, right, <laughs> now this might be a little bit more fun, so let's just open that up. Yeah, we have got paint that's gone through there so that was very wise to put that in and now we can stick that into there and we'll turn it round so I've now got my nice squishy mat inside and I might need to move it back and forth a little bit to, to stamp on the side but it's going to work quite nicely for me so let us take a little bit more of this red because I'm wanting the proper red not I don't mind it being mixed with a little bit of that and then we'll do a little bit more stamping with these there we are so let's just make sure we've got a layer of that on there all over to there and let's just start up there so we'll give that and you just like you know like just the same as if you're stamping with um inks you just need time um just a few seconds to let the paint sink into the fabric if you try and lift it too soon then you won't get a good thing uh, you know a good transfer and just make sure you've given it a little squish all over so there we are so let's just pick up some of that. And you don't want to necessarily overload your pieces. But there we are. We might struggle a little bit with adding the leaves, but they can go over and under, can't they? Because uh, that's what happens in real life. And where I had a fold in the fabric, well, that doesn't really matter. It just looks like it's a fold in the leaf or in the flower itself. There we are. We'll pick up some of that paler red into here. There we are. That looks like it's covered reasonably. So we'll pop that there. Yeah, I think it's quite good. I like it. it. I like it, it. Let me just lift that up there a little bit. Just give it a good squish down. There we are. Now I can see where I've missed that little bit. So if I just pick up some of that, and because I've missed it again, it's the same as if you've got your black pen when you're stamping, and I can add in some extra colour to the areas that I'm not happy with. You know, just in the same way as you would if you were stamping and that you'd missed a little bit, you'd just get a black pen out, wouldn't you? And just add it in to where you want it, you know, to, to where you want it. Yeah, the, these are lovely. They are really lovely. Um, and I think that, you know, they should be, you know, you should be able to find them reasonably easily um, in pretty much anywhere, I think, in the world. Um, if you Google wooden block stamps, then that will happen. And I'm aware that I've gone over onto the black uh, the red at the bottom 
but I'm hoping it's not going to show too much. One, two, three, four. And we can't have an odd number, can we? But there you are. So this might be slightly problematic because of the edge there, but we're just going to go for it. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I put the um, put the masking tape there in the first place because I knew that that would was going to need to do that. Um, so let's just uh, we've got sort of five images there. So let's just pop that over there. Give these a little wipe. Get rid of the paint that is tucked in the crevices because it will dry and over time will fill up if you're not careful and then the blocks won't won't work or won't print as nicely as if you take the time to give them a, a good goodly clean so let's just take that and pop it on the floor and then we can so this is the pine green because I wanted a darker colour for the leaves and we're going to add some of that into there just out of the way will work quite happily pop that out there stick that over there and grab a clean one of these foam this is a foam square but adorable will work just as well just give yourself a good even layer of your paint work out where you want to put your leaf um and i'm that's an end so let's just pop that up there deliberately so i know that that is half on half off and over my masking and that's cool and now I can put another one there and just in the same way as you get first and gen second generation stamping you'll get the same with this so let's just add another first second and third generation stamping and I might so that's not transferred very well that will be because there's very little paint left so let's just add a bit more and then we'll attempt the impossible there we are, but you can generally line your stamps up. There we are, and I don't might have a problem with that going over into the green. Let's just do that, and I've got two tone here, so I'm just going to go for it and repeat that. Okay, so, cool. And I need a bit more paint, so we're just going to add into here, pop that back. There we are. Get the right way, and I don't have a problem with it going over the flowers because that's what would happen in real life, isn't it? Is that <coughs> we'd have some flowers over some flowers under there we are and that's a back to second generation there we are so let's have one there one there yeah. let's see if we can get another one over into there and a bit more greenery over there and a bit more over there so we've got we've just built up and I think I'd like a, just a little bit over there but I don't particularly want um, a really deep impression so let me just grab that scrap onto there I can take off quite a lot of that it's just looking a little empty there and then I've got another pattern up there so I think I've got quite a good mixture here 
covering up the pieces and that will work for me so let me again look after that and as I say I will repeat this on the other side once this is dry there we are let's pop that there pop that there and let's just de-yuck the fingers and I'm I'm now using biodegradable baby wipes so um, I feel less guilty so let's just give these a bit of a whisk dry and then I can take off some of this tape and then we're going to use the fabric medium as a glue And I'm going to keep the, the side panels clean. I could add this one with some white stamping or some red on top of it because it would work. But I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to keep it clean. Because I think that that's looking rather, rather lovely just as it is. Right. Let's see where we go. So let's take that off there. Hey, I like it when a plan sort of comes together. That can come off there. I'm going to leave that one on there for the moment, purely because I, um, I'm going to have to do the other side off camera, and I knew that was going to be an issue. So how long a piece do I want? <laughs> 30 centimetres. So I just have some white lace here. That could do with being flat and ironed, but hey ho. So let's just take that and my nice fabric scissors because I'll get a nice clean cut by doing that. And let's just do that. And I've got my iron over there, so I am going to be nick nick nick, nick picky because why not? I'm just going to move this out of the way. I've got enough for the other side, so let me just pop that down there. I think it's looking rather dirty. So let's pick up. Yeah, this is the only sort of ironing any lady should ever do. Yo, yeah, it's ironing that's craftsmanship. This is cotton lace. Please don't try ironing any synthetic lace. I just want it to be flat for sticking down. There we are. Cool. Let's pop that over there. So I, th I think this is a very achievable project. You can get the blocks in lots of different sizes, shapes, styles, from dinosaurs for little children to bugs, bees, butterflies, elephants and paisley. You name it. There's lots and lots of variations on, on the those. And, you know, this isn't a difficult or complex. <laughs> or complex project to, to do, is it? Um, <laughs> ah, she says. Ah. Oh, that's where I've put them. See, I'm stepping on all sorts because I really am discombobulated this evening. Yeah, a bit like poor Annie was last night. Right, excellent. So, we can now pick that up. And I've got some green paint where I don't particularly want it, but that might be covered with some white paint later on. So now, let's just take that out of the way. Is that out of the way? He says. Is that out of the way? There we are. Let's just take. So this is the fabric medium. So this really is a multi, multi-purpose, multi-use product. So I used it to lighten earlier on. It dries clear. So I'm going to soak that. And I'm now going to, hey, hey, no sewing required, pop that onto there. I didn't quite go up to the top of that, so let's just pop that there. I'm going to sandwich the lace in place get rid of the the hair 
make sure it's well and truly covered and saturated and if I wanted to cut this at any point I could cut through there and it won't fray which is also always a step you know a good step isn't it so let's just repeat for the other side there we are because that's going to help cover some of the splurge from before there we are that can go onto there that can go onto there even that into place give it a little push down let's say we'll we'll put some white paint on at the top of there no one will be any of the any of the wiser that I've made a mess because if you just take a wet wipe to where you've smudged it it will just carry on spreading because until the heat set I guess I could heat set everything else and then wash it and try and get it rid of it that way but we'll just add some white paint and heat set it's going to be a darn sight easier than faffing around there we are so we've now got I only iron when I'm crafting, usually flower making. So that can go over there. So that can sit tucked down there. And then we've got our bag dangles that will go back to the front. <laughs> and we have some contour pen. Now then, let's just make sure. So this is just um, a contour pen. It's a dimensional product there we are let's just make sure it's flowing reasonably nicely let's squeeze out the, the dead bit from there give that a clean there we are it's the only time you really do need to look after these there we are and then all you need to do is pipe you knew your sewing skills were needed, didn't you? Yeah, you know, your baking skills. Even if you don't particularly enjoy the kitchen, it's quite helpful to be able to add. And you can add as much or as little. You know, I'm just picking out in here the lines that are already on the... You know, there from stamping and then just add some dots around oh yeah and for this one I think I'm just going to add the wriggle around there and we'll just add some dots just to get a bit more in detail there we are and those then need just to sit and to dry. So, I'm clearly not going to go and hang them on my bag when they're wet. I shall just pop them onto another bit of the floor for safekeeping because, well, I won't stand on them. We can now pick up our bag. Okay, okay. And the joy. And if I want to, I could, once these are dry, I could add some more details into here. There are red contour pens, green, blue, etc, etc. And then I can just tick, stick my bag charm on round the handle. There we are. So, ladies... After a traumatic start to the life, this is the one side of the bag. Once this lot has dried, I'm going to, I will come in and neaten some of the colours. I will then flip it over and repeat the process on the other side so that it's a two-sided piece um, and looks properly complete. But for tonight, I think you can see where we're going. We've got a beautiful poppy bag 
that we can then use for picnics, for going to the park, you know, to going to the beach if that's what you want to do, in a way that is very simple, very effective, um, and it doesn't require huge amounts of, um, of painting skills. So something that you could do with your teenagers, for yourself, even with the, the little ones, because they will love a you know, cheap, cheap pot canvas bag, pop the paints out, they're perfectly safe, they're water soluble, then, you know, as long as they've got some adult supervision, then then really not going to come to any harm with, with these. Obviously, adult supervision, and I wouldn't suggest you let them eat or drink the paint, but, you know, great project to do for lots of different uh, occasions. So, good night for now, my darling. So, please stay safe, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you back in my regular Tuesday slot next week. So, ta-ta for now. <laughs>